just want to talk about professional opinions because lately, especially on the gram, well, TikTok too, on all these social media platforms, there's so many opinions. And I think for me, having the opportunity to have a podcast and interview a lot of health professionals, a lot of uh, mental health professionals, just PhDs, researchers, doctors, all these people, what I've learned just from being in the, in this world myself and also interviewing and talking to, we're taking out the information from so many wonderful professionals. I just, it's like, I have to pass, I feel like I have to pass along to you guys to remember that even though they're professionals and even though they're looking at research and even, even though they're working with people, they are all opinions. At the end of the day, all this information that you get here on social media, they're all professional opinions even if they're research backed because research is always conflicting anecdotal evidence which is super huge in health is all conflicting i have had some clients that keto was the most wonderful thing for them for a little while i've had clients where keto was not a wonderful thing for them at all like ever like it was not a go i've had clients who now that i'm doing even more lab testing specifically doing gut testing stool analysis looking at people's microbiomes it is like comical not comical it's not funny it's it's sad it's unbelievable that we are still giving people generalized information that we say this is how it is for everybody and i see things like from people i really respect and love i see things like like women should not intermittent fast and then you'll have these intermittent fasting experts so it's like that's the best thing ever for women and You, know, you should always eat breakfast don't eat breakfast it's good for your blood sugar metabolism you know blood sugar regulation and all of this stuff and it's just it's so conflicting and i just want to like put the power back into you guys to just like take all information run it through what i call your filter of truth and don't be afraid to to just know for yourself that it might be a little bit different for you you know don't if don't get dogmatic either if you're like yes you've been you're in some sort of cult like thinking of some dietary approach or some way of living some training approach or whatever resist the urge to stay in this dogmatic that's the right way because your body and your physiology might change over time too. And also, even though there's so many wonderful professionals out there, like there's, I mean, I'm just gonna keep it real with you guys. There's some people out there that like, when you are a health professional and you see how they're coming across, it's very, um, it's in the energy of persuasion, of I'm right. And let me find all this information to prove that my way is right. And even if stuff starts to like be like, well, maybe your way isn't the most optimal way for all humans, you'll see things like, well, maybe we just don't need as much thyroid hormone, or maybe we don't need as much gut bacteria if we're doing this approach, you know? And it's this like proving I'm right energy. We gotta shy away from that. And and I, if there's one thing I have learned as a health professional, there is not one right way for all people, end of story, period whether it's nutrition, whether it's how much sleep you need, whether it's how you do your lifestyle, what the way you train, all of it. Like keep stay strong. Stay strong in this information age of all these people that are in this very black and white information giving way of like this is how everyone should be. This is how you should do it. This is good and this is bad. It's not like that. I've had people that were so, so deep in that carnivore way of thinking and their gut tests are a freaking wreck. And I've had people who use carnivore for a little while to kill off a little bacteria. I definitely don't recommend doing it forever. Definitely don't. If I'm going to say one thing that I like, at least in my experience, have seen like kind of wreck people is when they stay in a really, really dogmatic approach for a long, long, long extended period of time. But you never know for you that maybe that's the way but be willing to be willing to look at and like really evaluate like am i really getting the results i want from the approach that i'm taking and okay i'm gonna try that approach that that professional says if you want to try and just see how it works for me but like if you're working with someone directly i hope that they are open-minded and not making you feel wrong if that approach isn't working for you. 
do labs, do blood testing, do hair mineral analysis, do gut testing, especially if you can work with somebody who can test your gut, like a holistic health coach like me, or ideally a naturopathic doctor or functional medicine doctor, do actual testing to see what you need. You know, we don't have to guess anymore. It is so worth the investment in your health to find out how things are actually going. And then you can only, you can invest your money into things that only you need, or you can modify your approach in a way that you need. Not that somebody's generally saying on social media, you know? And so I just want to pass that along. Cause I just, it's like my feed when I, I was getting my nails done. So I was happened to be scrolling. I don't scroll a lot, but I was just scrolling and I was like, there's so much dogma. This has got to be so confusing for people. I just read a post, that post, and then four posts down just completely contradicted each other. That's got to be so confusing for people. So for you guys, just especially as we get more dogma, we get more people who want to have a voice and want to be right. And they've got, they've got statistics to back it up. That's great. But just know that that might still, you might not fit into that statistic. You might be different than that research study of 300 people that they did, that they shared. Okay. So, cause I know like, I mean, I just saw a post from someone I really respect that was like, women should not intermittent fast. It'll take their hormones. And I'm like, not me. It's been a really great approach for me. If, if I do see my hormones taking, sure, I will gladly switch, but I've been doing it for a while. Um, I also have some days where I allow myself to fluctuate out of that if I want to, you know what I mean? But it's been a really great approach for me. I'm feeling great. My blood works great. My gut health is great, you know? And so it's like, I see those and I'm like, mm, you can't really say that. You can't really just say for women in general, this is bad for men in general. This is bad for all humans. This is the way they should eat. Like we can't, can be doing that. I'm telling you in looking at labs. And like I said, specifically gut tests, if there is, I, I, I feel professionally irresponsible, honestly, for ever having made nutrition recommendations without seeing people's gut microbiomes. That's where I'm at right now, professionally. The more of these tests I'm getting in from clients, I'm like, well, shit, you're not, <laughs> you're not digesting protein at all. Like, and actually like you have a lot of fermentation going on and your ammonia is high and you know, you, we see SIBO people like people walking around with freaking SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth have no idea. And they're just following this nutrition approach. They're not digesting anything. So I'd say there's my two main messages are this. Remember that your body is unique and really evaluate how is the approach that I'm doing working for me? Am I getting improvements or things improving? And two, test, invest in some testing, invest in some blood labs. If you want to do general blood labs, what I recommend now is life force. Tony Robbins, they have a diagnostic thing where the phlebotomist will come to your house and draw your blood for you, take it to the lab for you. And you get a call with a, one of their doctors. Of course, they're going to rep recommend supplements because they have them all, but you don't have to do those. You can get, or you can get your own supplements somewhere else, but it's all the labs that I would like to see. And it's $399 or I think it's like 150 a month. If you want the membership, that's really cool. That is a very affordable. If you're paying out of pocket for blood labs, that's very affordable, especially with somebody coming to your house and you get a visit with a doc on top of it. It's really great. So they, um, I'm working that's who I'm using with my clients now. And I have a, they did give me a coupon for it. It's coach Tara. If you want to try that. Um, yeah, if you're tired of blood draws, well, I mean, I don't know what your backstory is for me. I definitely like to see what my blood labs are occasionally, see how things are going. Um, and then hair mineral analysis, I use upgraded formulas. That's the same thing. There's a discount to these guys on my website, um, upgraded formulas.com coach Tara. Also I have, I've arranged, you know, <laughs> deals with these guys. So they give you 15% off. I believe that's a great way to do it just on your own. And then for gut testing, you need to work with somebody cause you ain't gonna know, you ain't gonna understand your, and I don't what recommend Western medicine for gut tests. Cause all their, from the labs that I've gotten from clients, they're just like, basically trying to see if you're not going to, if you're going to die tomorrow. So I use microbiome labs. Some other professionals use GI map. That's really great too, but you're going to need to work with like a nutritionist or a functional medicine doctor or naturopath or somebody, but I can't recommend that enough. That is by far my most favorite thing that I've started doing in my coaching and just actually finding out what people need. And man, if you get your microbiome on point, your gut bacteria, 
there's so many studies showing people losing weight just from getting their a lot of weight, significant amounts of weight, um, from just getting their gut bacteria. So if your gut's a wreck, I mean, that is like numero uno where I would start, like invest in that for yourself and find out what you need. Don't, we don't have to guess anymore. It is worth the investment. If you get new tires on your car or you get an oil change, like you can invest that on your body. It, it, it dictates your entire quality of life. It's where you make a lot of your neurotransmitters at least 80%, upwards of 95% of your serotonin is made in your gut. GABA, I can't tell you how, do you know what GABA is? G-A-B-A, -A. do you guys know GABA? GABA is the inhibitory neurotransmitter that's like the brakes on your brain and it's made in here in your gut. And I've seen the GABA production on several clients, nothing. They're not making GABA. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense why they're like anxious AF, you know? And so really important. Um, at, at least half your dopamine is ma manufactured in your gut. And then of course you got to have a healthy brain so you can uptake and use these neurotransmitters, but that all starts in your gut. Okay. So invest in yourself and some lab tests. Don't stop like just guessing from like all these dogmatic approaches that you're seeing on social media of this is the right way. This is the right way. This is good. This is bad. Kale's going to kill you. You don't know if kale's going to kill you, but guess what? If you got a dysbiotic gut and you can't break down certain vegetables, it's going to suck, you know? And then I see from like the carnivore community, for example, it's like, I ate this and it wrecked my gut. And I'm like, yeah, bro, because you don't have the bacteria and enzymes to break that down. It's not that the plant is bad necessarily. It's, it's maybe bad for you right now because you can't break it down. Um, apple cider vinegar is great. That's a great thing to use in the middle of meals um, to help increase your stomach acid. Most of us have low stomach acid. Most people have low stomach acid. If there's going to be a supplement that I would recommend a couple of supplements for most people. And of course, again, I can't say for sure without testing, but like for most people, some digestive enzymes with betaine HCL to increase your stomach acid for at least like three months is a really great idea. Or you could use some apple cider vinegar and some digestive enzymes. Most people need some, a boost in their stomach acid. I, that is like, I see that pretty much every single time I get a gut test, major signs of low stomach acid. Um, and then, uh, fish oil, like a high quality fish oil. You guys could get like Nordic naturals or something on Amazon. I use a practitioner website with my clients. Yes. I've heard of Viome. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> you just purchased it. I used to work with Viome when they first came out in like 2017 ish. They were really big back then. I would just I'm being totally real. I don't, I'm not a fan of Viome. I did it. I used to use it with clients. Um, I just, yeah, it's not my favorite, but we'll see what you, what you get out of it. Um, microbiome labs is by far my favorite for gut testing, but you have to have a practitioner do it. Um, You've used apple cider vinegar for about six years. That's, that's great. Yeah. I mean, if it's helping improve your digestion, I'm all for it. Um, oh, you switched to pills though. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, and you could try doing some betaine HCL for a few months and see if you can just rebuild your own stomach acid and you may not need it forever. Um, but yeah, that's all guys. Like keep, keep, stay true to yourselves in terms of all the information you're receiving. And remember that everybody is different. Everybody is different. Okay. Your training approach, your nutrition approach, sleep, all your habits, like it just do what is actually, what actually helps you feel better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. It's confusing world out there, guys. All right. I'm going to go see my Micah, my 10 year old, do a little Chinese performance at the school here. So I'm running. All right. See you guys. Have a good night. Bye.